Hi there. In this video, we're going over a bunch of new features in LifeFX version 9.8. The feature that took most time but is best hidden is that we have ported the entire code base to Metal in order to boost performance and future proofness on the Mac. This also adds a step towards making the Mac a viable platform for virtual production workflows. We have, however, left a backdoor here in the advanced settings where you can revert back to good old OpenGL if need be. Let's enter a project. Also new on Mac is support for the USD file format, which we already supported on Windows for quite a while. We also enhanced our render engine for USD to deliver better and faster results. Also supported on both Mac and Windows as of version 9.8, Radiance HDRI files. This file format is most used to store 3D lighting conditions and can be easily used to color sample from in the Stage Lights module to control your fixtures. Back to the Construct tab and let's move on to the Projection Setup panel. LifeFX 9.8 has updated Frustum Projection, Frustum Highlight, Cylindrical Projection and Multi-Wall Setup functions. Let's start with the Frustum Projection and create a quick setup. The Frustum to Wall node now features the option to show a border around the Frustum. We can dial in the width as well as the color. Back to the Construct tab. And let's look at the new and improved cylindrical projection type. I'll create a setup real quick with a single wall stage. Looking into the stage manager, the first thing you'll see is that we now visualize the cylinder geometry used for the projection. The same applies to spherical and dome projection. And same as with those two, the cylindrical projection can be switched to a fixed position so the cylinder does not move with the camera but can be positioned and sized separately. Let's take a look at the stage manager, which also received an update. To help with positioning and sizing the cylinder, or sphere with spherical projection, we have worked on the viewing options drop down up here. They now enable you to choose in more detail what you want to see in the stage manager, like the geometry of the cylinder or sphere, for instance. This is especially helpful when compositing multiple planes or panoramic shots together in a 2.5D setup. Not only that, but you can now also navigate more freely in the Stage Manager by holding down Shift and drag to move in XYZ. Now let's look at the new advanced option in the Projection Setup panel. Before you could only choose one clip to play back on a multi-wall stage with every wall getting one and the same clip, like such. You then had to go ahead and eventually replace the clips of some walls with other clips you wanted to have show up there. This is now much easier. In the new Projection Setup panel, you can simply hit the Advanced button here and a new window will pop up. In here, we can simply drag and drop clips onto any wall and decide the projection type individually. Furthermore, we can now select whether we want the Frustum highlight to be displayed on all walls or only on a specific wall, like the main back wall. Displaying the Frustum highlight only on the main wall that is actually being shot by the camera simplifies the node tree quite a bit and also saves on performance. Let's create this setup and take a quick look at our node tree. As you can see, there is only one projection node, the one for the main back wall, that has the Frustum overlay setup connected. This setup consists out of three Frustum to wall nodes. One that creates the mat for the inner Frustum, one for the outer Frustum, and one for the Frustum border, which you can simply enable here on the projection node itself. Next, as you can see, we have three different source clips feeding into their respective projection node, which is then fed into our switcher node. Here comes one simple but most significant feature in 9.8. When navigating the node tree, you can see that the viewport by default always shows the selected node instead of the overall context output that we get by selecting the top level node. Now in the past, you could lock your viewport to maintain the context output for both viewport and LED wall. But that came with certain creative limitations. Version 9.8 features a new setting which makes sure that the LED volume at all times receives the intended overall image output regardless of whether the viewport is locked to a certain node. You can find this setting under Settings, Monitors, on the far right. It is enabled by default and hence allows for the most freedom when working on upstream nodes in the node tree. Speaking of which, 
the Note 3 also received a significant update with great impact on performance. I'm talking about the little C-labeled button down here. It mainly concerns shot notes that are duplicated in the existing composition and it determines whether the duplicate should be a full copy or a reference to the already existing instance of the node. Let me show you how this works and enable the C button first. Now we need to grab a shot note that already exists in the composition. We can do that from either the staging area, which lists all media used in the current composition, or directly from the node tree. Let me grab this node. Now I can drop it at a different place in the composition. This can be the fill map menu of any existing layer, the inputs menu of the current node, or directly into the node tree. For instance, replacing this other shot node, like such. I have now created a full copy and I can color grade each one individually. The downside here is that both shot nodes will get decoded individually as well, which obviously causes a higher impact on the performance of the underlying hardware. So let me show you the smart way to go about this and disable the C button again. If I now do the exact same action again, dragging this shot note and replacing the other one, LifeFX will first check whether this shot already exists somewhere in my composite. Since that is indeed the case and the C button is disabled, it will only create a reference instead of a full copy, indicated by a blue border and the dotted line. What does this mean? To show you, let me add a grade to one of the two notes here. As you can see, both nodes get the grade. Performance-wise, this makes a huge difference since now the underlying media only needs to be decoded once instead of twice. Also, the color grade only gets processed and applied once. If I wanted to color grade those two shots individually, I could simply accomplish this by grading the next node in the branch, like the projection node here. Or insert a nest node and do all my individual color grading there. Note that you can only reference source clip nodes. Plugin and effect nodes are not possible. The next important update is OpenColorIO. We have updated to OpenColorIO version 2.3 and are now shipping a default config with LifeFX so we can use OpenColorIO right away. Of course, we still provide the option in the advanced settings to point LifeFX to your own OCIO config. On to the Stage Lights tab. Let's start in the Fixture menu. In the Fixture Patching tab, a few things have been rearranged. At the top, we now select whether our fixture is a video or DMX fixture. Universe, Starting Channel and Channel Count are dialed in as before. Prior to version 9.8, you could dial in how many global channels at beginning and end there were. With 9.8, we have reversed this setting. Now you can dial in which DMX channel range should be repeated and how often. All other channels are automatically global channels. In this case here, we want channels 2 through 4 to be repeated 48 times to control the 48 pixels on the actual fixture. In the channel list, all channels that are repeated are marked with an asterisk. New in 9.8 is the drop down down here. The repeat the universe function is the same as before. We can tell LiveFX to repeat this exact channel layout for the next so and so many universes to control more fixtures that are mounted in one rack and treat them as a single fixture. Alternatively, we now have the ability to switch this drop down to into next universes. With this, we can define the number of pixels and channels to repeat and LiveFX will fill up the current universe. If, to address all pixels, there are more DMX channels required than one universe allows for, LifeFX will basically spill over into the next universe and so forth. This allows LifeFX to easily control fixtures with a very high amount of pixels, as in thousands of pixels. Let's create an example and define a fixture with 10 DMX channels. The first five channels should get repeated 200 times and then the last five channels, effectively being global channels, being added at the very end. Now with 512 channels per universe, we can fit 102 pixels in. Five channels times 102 pixels makes 510 channels. Now we still have two channels left in this universe, channels 511 and 512. 
With the A button here enabled, LivaFix will not use these channels and start the next pixel, also consisting out of 5 channels, in the next universe. If I disable this option, LivaFix will put the first two of the five channels still in this universe and the last three channels in the next universe, channels 1, 2 and 3. The O button allows us to maintain a start channel offset. Let's say we are not starting on channel 1 with the first universe, but rather channel 30. With the O button disabled, LivaFix will start at channel 1 in the next universe. With the O button enabled, LifeFix will spill over into the next universe, starting also at channel 30, leaving channels 1 through 29 unoccupied. With this much flexibility, LifeFix now allows to map and control pretty much any fixture out there, no matter how many pixels it entails. And the best of it all, Despite this fixture physically requiring hundreds or even thousands of DMX channels, to a lighting console LivaFix presents this fixture just in the form of a couple channels. Let's move on to the color sampling tab, as there have been some significant changes as well. As you might remember, up until now you could decide whether you want a fixture to sample from the video or just show a fixed color. I present to you the Crossfade Slider. You can now define a solid color and fade between that color and the sampled video. Next, we've added ultimate flexibility to the grid mapping. You can now define rows and columns of your fixture and tell LifeFX in which order to address each sample cell. Horizontal and vertical zigzag, horizontal and vertical snake and of course the invert of each, choosing to go left right and up down or the other way around. Another feature that was requested a bunch of times was the ability to completely flip-flop fixtures, which you can do now as well at the click of a button. The last bunch of helpful additions is to be found in the config menu. For 360 footage that is tagged accordingly here in the metadata stack, you can now enable an overlay indicating where front, back, left, right as well as top and bottom areas on the clip are. The next setting allows you to see where your fixtures are when inside the LifeFX tab. This can be helpful when applying grades to certain areas of the image, like creating a layer, drawing a canvas over here, maybe adding some softness, and then adjusting the color grade in that area. Now, the last update for this video is the lighting console patching. If we open the patcher window, we can spot two tabs. The first one lets us patch generic application functions and fixtures with different default profiles to be controlled through certain universes and DMX channel ranges, just like before. However, we're now able to also customize the patch for each individual fixture and function. The settings tab is new and extends the usability of LifeFX with a lighting console. Latest takes precedence allows to make changes in LifeFX to a particular channel or function that is controlled by a lighting console. Up until now, if a lighting console was patched to a specific control, like a dimmer channel of any fixture, only the lighting console would be able to control this channel. Trying to change this channel from the LifeFX UI would simply just not be possible, as the lighting console would be constantly sending a DMX value to that channel. With this new setting, you can change this channel via the LifeFX UI for as long as the value coming from the lighting console does not change. Once you change the value on the lighting console, that change again takes precedence and is applied to the channel here in LifeFX. A new feature is the use of a switcher node from out of a lighting console. The switcher node in LifeFX is a simple video switcher with inputs and outputs. Here you can define how many of these inputs should be controlled from the lighting console and you can also point LifeFX to a timeline inside the project holding clips to load into any of the patchable inputs of the switcher node using a console. The different inputs can then be patched here in the patching tab. Speaking of switcher nodes, let's take a quick look at our node tree with a switcher node and three effects clips as its inputs. These three inputs can also be found in the Inputs menu, which, as of version 9.8, features a Vary Speed option to slow down or speed up any input individually. I can now speed this input up to 150% speed, for instance. 
This just gives you a few more degrees of freedom to control the source for sampling video and the resulting effect on the fixture. The vary speed option of course not only applies to the switcher notes inputs but really any notes input along with the in and out points to define the range that I want to use of the input source clip. Be aware though that this vary speed function is a very basic retimer that repeats or skips frames. For final pixel projection on LED volumes you should consider using our dedicated retimer plugin. This is it for a brief overview of what's new in version 9.8. There are many more smaller features and enhancements which did not fit the scope of this video. Have fun discovering them on your own. Bye.